So this is Maya acting one, mood posture and posing. In this session, we won't be animating, uh, really. We'll be setting some poses, practicing mood and posture for animation. A big part of acting for animation and really live action acting is conveying mood. And for the most part, we do this through a character's posture. But instead of doing this with our own body in front of a camera, as an actor would, we have to project our acting onto the screen with a character's posture and the timing. Timing and posing are the two most important things to remember when, when blocking your animation. Acting is also competed with facial animation in large part, but we'll get into that a little later in the course. In this session, we're just going to focus on posture. When you're posing your character, it's really important to treat every pose as if it was a beautiful sculpture. It should look really nice, a nice silhouetted pose in the camera view. First, let's take a look at the line of action in a pose. Some common lines of action are C curves and S curves. So open up your project file, set your layout, press S six on the keyboard when you're in each view panel, just to show the uh, to show the images on the plane here. So on frame one, we have this this first image. There's this girl standing here, and she's got this line of action going through her. We're just going to use this grease pencil tool in Maya. She's got all the weight on her right leg. There's an action line that actually runs through this pose that we really should think about when we're, um, when we're when we're posing out our characters in Maya for 3D or for 2D. You can see the line runs right through her body like that. And it's a C curve because it's shaped kind of like a C. We also have to take into account the tilt of the, the shoulders and the tilt of the hips and then where the arms are going. So you have this design that kind of looks like this. Let's take a look at another one. This is a more extreme C curve. The line runs through her body in this pose if you were going to pose your character out like this. You want to take into account the design of the pose. It's an abstract design. So it would be something like that. Let's take a look at another one. If you take a close look at this pose, her spine and hips together, they sort of form this S shape. So if you draw a line right through the center of the body, the action line for this pose would be something like this. So it's more of an S curve. In this kind of a pose, there's a C curve and an S curve. The line of action, the main line of action that runs through her body, goes through her body and through this leg. This is sort of an extra part of the um, pose. But if you take a look at the arms, usually if her arm was extended a little more, but you can get the idea here, there's an S curve that runs through the arms. So a lot of times characters will have S curves or certain designs that sort of make up the, the pose. You want to think about the line of action first and then where the arms should go and legs. So you'll notice in this file that there's there's an image at every every 20 frames. 20, 40, 60, 80. Starting at frame 80, you can start posing out all the all the images that we have in here. So 80 starts at 80, goes to 100. So starting at 80, we have a happy pose. There's one, two, there's three happy, a disparaging pose, two, three despair, and then three angry. So go ahead and pose your mannequin in all of these poses. I'll do the first one with you. So the first thing you want to do is you want to identify the line of action. So in this pose, it's a C curve. That runs right through the body. Then the arms are doing this. The arms are kind of in a some more symmetrical design. All right, so let's get to work on posing our character. So just like in any other scene, you want to be using the perspective view to select your controls. You always want to have the camera view up and uh, very visible so that you can see the pose in the camera view. So we'll just do the first one with you and I'm going to explain a few things and you guys can go ahead and do the rest. So the first thing we do, just like we've been doing in, our, in some of the previous lessons, pose the root first. So that's the tilt of the hips. So we're going to work our way through the center of the body first, posing the root and then we can select the spine controls and get the, the bend of the torso. And don't be afraid to exaggerate it a little bit. The most important thing here is getting the pose to convey the mood that's shown in the image. So obviously this is very happy, like it just won something, or his favorite team won a game or something like that. Just try to think of a scenario of, of why he would be so happy, and then pose the character accordingly. It's important that the character, when we're done, it looks like it, it conveys the mood. So use all the controls that you need to to get the pose where you like it. I'm just going to use uh, FK arms in here. So I'm going to use the clavicles, get the clavicle up a little bit. He's happy, he's got his arms in the air, so the clavicles would naturally go up if you put your arms in the air. So when I grab the shoulder, I'm really just trying to get the, the angle of the, the upper arm, just from the shoulder to the elbow. I sort of do that first, and we can see in the example it's almost straight out. And then I bend the elbow a little bit. 
So if we rotate the shoulder in X, you can see the, the bend. You can even use the, the global rotate or the camera facing rotate in the camera view. Sometimes I do that when I'm posing my character just to get what I'm looking for. And you really want to make sure that you have your poses are silhouetted. I know we've mentioned it already in some of the pre previous classes, but I can't stress how important silhouetted poses are. The worst thing that you'd want to have is a pose like this, where you have the, the hand in front of the head. It should be very clear to the audience. The whole purpose behind silhouetted poses is it's for staging. And staging is basically making things clear to the audience. The idea should be clear. The idea that you're trying to get across with the character's pose. When we talk about staging, really, it's not just character posing, it's what the camera does. It's guiding the audience's eye to what you want them to look at. And not just what you want them to look at, but how you want them to look at it. So you have to be really particular when you're posing your character. Like I said before, treat every pose as if it was a sculpture. And do every little thing you need to do to, to get that pose exactly like it needs to be to convey that mood. So you have to think about the line of action, what the general angle and bend of the body is. And we can get a little more particular with this and just get the torso more bent. Don't be afraid to exaggerate it a little bit. Exaggeration is one of the animation principles and it applies to your posing as well. And I know the mannequin's body, the mannequin's proportions are not uh, equal to the proportions of a real person in these pictures, so just pose them accordingly. As long as the, like I said, as long as the, the mood is being conveyed through the pose. Okay, so something like that, you can see I exaggerated it a little bit. You just want to make sure that all the space in between the legs, the feet, all the negative space, the space that are, that's around him, has some clearance from the rest of his body, or the, the legs and arms have clearance from the rest of his body. At least some clearance. This would not be okay. So just make sure things are clear and really convey the mood. The purpose of this exercise is to give you a clear and solid understanding of how important your character's posture is to the mood of the scene and the mood of the character. So as you're going through all of your animation and you're blocking out the posing and timing, you have to pay as careful attention to your posing when you're animating as you would with the poses in this exercise. Also too, it would be really cool to add some other poses um, without any reference. And what we'd like you to do is um, you can extend your scene a little bit and just add three more poses where there's no reference at all. Just create three poses with an idea in mind of a mood that the character is in and we'll see if we can guess what, uh, what the character is feeling. 